On July the 11th, the Russian troops struck two missiles on Turetsk and shelled other municipalities in the Donetsk region from MLRS and artillery, according to Pavlo Kirilenko, the head of the Donetsk Regional Military Administration. Namely, early in the morning, Turetsk was shelled twice. One missile hit an outpatient clinic and the second struck in a private garage's area, he said. In Bahmut, the invader's rocket ruined a sports complex. Siversk and Avdivka towns and Chasovoyarska, Ilinivska and Svetohirska communities were hit by artillery fire. Raihorodok was shelled from Uragan MLRS with cluster projectiles. There are no civilian casualties, Mr. Kirilenko added. According to Vadim Lach, the chief of Slovyansk City Military and Civilian Administration, last night the Russian military shelled Slovyansk. The strikes damaged several detached houses and a woman was wounded. In his video address he reported that the power outage in the city the other day was caused by repair works. We stopped trolleybus transportation, as the staff now available in the trolleybus division, I mean insufficient technical personnel and maintenance teams, it is impossible to perform their duties. Let's hold on, we stand together, take care. On July the 11th, the Russian army dealt seven airstrikes at Odessa region from the seized Crimea, as reported by Kirill Tymoshenko, deputy head of the office of the president. The missiles hit port infrastructure and the residential buildings, reports South Operational Command. Four X-31 missiles were launched from a Su-30 fighter aircraft. One of them hit a detached one-story house in a coastal village. Another hit a port infrastructure facility. Three X-31 missiles targeted agricultural lands in the region. No air raid casualties have been reported. Valentina's house was the closest to the blast epicenter. Two families reside here. It blasted so hard. We hid under the table. Windows and doors were gone. I got out from under the table and saw so much dust. I went out and saw nothing. Even the fence was gone. It was a missile strike. Next to the owner house, there is their recreation facility. It has six rooms. In each of them, the windows were broken out, furniture destroyed, and the terrace was damaged by the fragments and blast wave. In the morning on July the 12th, the Russian armed forces shelled Mykolaiv. As we know by now, two medical facilities and residential properties were hit, informs Mykolaiv Regional Military Administration. No casualties have been so far reported. According to Vitaly Kim, the head of the Mykolaiv RMA, as of 9.50, there were 12 wounded due to the morning shelling of Mykolaiv. Rescuers are working at the scene. Yesterday they started shelling at 4.03. Today it started at the same time we heard blasts. After the second blast the alarm went off, both on the phone and outside. After that there was a row of blasts. We got up at once to hide between the walls in the door opening. The walls are about one meter thick or more. It's a very old building. We thought we'd be secure. But fragments from the window hit us, my husband's face and me a little. We heard a very powerful blast and saw a fire outside. It's so frightening. As of 12 a.m., the city mayor Oleksandr Sinkevich reported that damages were inflicted into hospitals after the morning shelling in Mykolaiv. Windows were broken out in the buildings and in some premises ceilings fell down. Among the staff and patients no one was killed. In one of the hospitals, a guard was injured. In the occupied Mariupol, people have to clear the debris of destroyed buildings for food, said Petro Andrushenko, advisor to the mayor of Mariupol. A plate of cooked cereal and a bottle of water is the only guaranteed remuneration for hard work, he said. According to him, the invaders allocated money for only 900 workers, 12,000 rubles for a person per month. And in fact, four times more people are working to clear the debris. Mr. Andrushenko also reported that the so-called mayor of Mariupol, Ivashenko, together with the Russian emergency ministry officials, are stealing the humanitarian aid in the city and money allocated for workers' wages.
According to Yulia Barysheva, the head of the Department of Media, Relations and Public Affairs of the State Emergency Service of Ukraine in the Zaporizhia region, 1,425 explosive items that remained after the shelling of Russian troops were removed by Zaporizhia rescue sappers since the beginning of the full-scale invasion of the Russian army on the territory of Ukraine, in particular on the territory of the Zaporizhia region. In addition to the mining tasks on land, sappers of the Divine Service search for and neutralize shells and their remains in the water. It is safer to search for underwater shells with the help of an echo sounder. After we find an explosive device, we mark the location and then the divers go down and carry out the mining. Four pyrotechnic crews leave for combat missions in different parts of our region every day. Explosive objects of the occupying forces, which brazenly invaded our motherland, were sown not only in open territories, fields where crops were supposed to grow, but also in private territories. Destroyed houses, completely destroyed infrastructure. Sometimes there are even landing on water bodies. This place was once filled with people and children's voices, but now it is just a ruined building. An easel, acrylic paints on a palette and a palette knife in her hands. A 12-year-old artist paints a picture of a school that was bombed by the Russians with an artistic palette stroke by stroke. I have a desire to record as many destroyed places as possible, so that all this remains in memory. Varvara comes from Luhansk. When she was four year old, her family fled the war to relatives in Belarus. They lived there for the last eight years. No one knew how long it would take. We thought we would sit out the hostilities and return. But so it turned out, the hostilities dragged on for many years, and we were there as long as there was an opportunity. As soon as Russia began a full-scale invasion of Ukraine, the family decided that they could no longer live in Belarus. They returned to Ukraine. It is better to be here than to watch many others turn a blind eye and just ignore, look for some excuses. It is difficult when you understand what is really happening. There is only one truth. We realized that we couldn't stay there anymore. Morally, it was very difficult. The destroyed high-rise building on Chornovola Street, the wrecked Hotel Ukraina and the bombed school number 21. These are the first works of the destroyed architecture of the 12-year-old artist Varvara Paladi. At that time, I could not even imagine that I would draw destroyed buildings and my destroyed city. And while I am painting these works, I want all people to remember the history of their country. Every year, during the holidays, the Mrihin family came to Chernihiv. The family settled here during the war. I fell in love with the city at first sight eight years ago. Something is changing here, something is being built. We really liked the city and wanted to come here for a long time. The artist Varvara Paladi plans to write a series of works on the destroyed Chernihiv. In the future, she plans to sell one of them at a charity auction and give the money to the armed forces. I want all this to remain in people's memory, so that no one forgets what happened on our land. May there be eternal glory to the heroes who defended the motherland and gave their lives. This is very important to remember.